What happens when you give same prompt, same task to four different AI code gen tool? However, the results are completely different for all of these four tools. Hi everyone, my name is Sean and in this video, we're going to be demoing four different AI code gen tools. We're going to use the same repo, same project. It's an open source project built on React and Next. We're going to be demoing four of these tools, give them the same prompt. However, four of them reacted in a different way. One of them rocked, one of them completely broke the project and rest too, we'll figure that out in the video. So I'm pretty excited to talk about all of these four code generation tool. One of them is my favorite because it was able to quickly build that feature, which is a note taking app, which you could probably use after your meeting or within the meeting. So it's a simple note taking app, which we're going to build using these AI code generation tool. Let's deep dive in the video. All right, the first one in the list is Kodo CLI. So in order to get started, all you need to do is npm install Kodo command and that's fairly it. Um, I've also got the open source project up and running, IOTA wise. It's built on React and Next. As you can see, it's running on port 3000. Uh, what it does is it tracks my activity around coding, gaming, entrepreneurship, exercise, travel. That's pretty much all I do. Uh, it has got an activity log uh, calendar as well. That's fairly it. What we're going to do is we're going to build a note taking feature as well inside this dashboard and ask all of these code generator, AI code generator to create these features as well. So I've already got the terminal up and running. In order to get started, all you need to do is Kodo login and then make sure you are in the right repo. I am inside the repo already. All you need to do is once you've logged in using Kodo login, all you need to do is Kodo hyphen hyphen chat and that's fairly it. Now you can start once it has kind of um, opened up the terminal, uh, it uses MCP architecture in the background. So you've got a lot of context as well. In case you want to change your model, you can use the hyphen model um, parameters as well. All right. So what I want to do is I'm going to say, I'm going to say add a simple note taking app feature to the landing page and include a bunch of stuff. A text area to write a note a save button, list down, display saved notes and the store, store uh, the mockup in the background and use the local storage for now and add this to the UI. That's fairly it. I'm going to hit enter and it is going to start processing it. Meanwhile, I'm going to stop using the code as well. As you can see, it will start scanning the directory. In this case, that's the directory where the code base is. Now it's getting all the child directories as well. All right, so it's trying to make some changes uh, in the page.tsx. Uh, um, it, it is asking me for whether to approve uh, once or for all. So I'm going to do yellow, yellow so that it can just keep applying those changes. All right, within a few seconds, Koro has implemented the changes, looks like. And it has given us a summary as well. Uh, it has created an MD file as well. It has, so it's just saying that it has added a save button. It has added a list of save node feature as well. Uh, added a backend storage, which is a mock-up local one, clean UI, blah, blah. Then enhance user experience, technical, ex and the file changes as well. So it did added um, a component, which is notes, and uh, then added a local storage and a bunch of other files. So it is saying that, okay, it's kind of created a quick, uh, Read me as well for me. And it is saying that the feature is now live uh, uh, on the landing page. So let's go ahead and run it um, uh, and see in the actions. So if I just try to run the local host and keep scrolling, bingo. You can see the quick note is over here. You can simply, you can add, you can see that it has added um, input section and uh, a welcome message as well. So let's type. This section was created by Kodo CLI. So if I just save note, it will save the notes as well. And you can add as many notes as you want. If you just refresh, it will uh, kind of um, 
purses the notes as well. All right, that's fairly it from the first one in the list. I like the UI. It was able to generate the changes within a very quick span of time. It is summarized as well and gave me a clean, interactive UI. I'll see you in the next one. All right, the next one in the list is Cursor. So I've already cloned the same repo which we've been using. That's the repo which we used. Uh, I'm going to add the context. So in the files and folder, I'm going to say open source repo. That's what I'm using. So I want, I'm, I'm going to use the same prompt, by the way. That's the whole idea, right? So I'm going to say add a simple note-taking feature to the uh, load of IOTA-wise landing page. Include the same save button, text button, and should be able to save as well. All right. So I'm going to hit enter and I'm going to give Cursor the context. So Cursor is like a new edge ID with all your code base context and AI uh, powered ID. If, if you've used kind of Visual Studio Code, uh, the learning curve shouldn't be that high. So it's a new ID on its own um, with AI context with your code base context as well. All right, so it has already started to make the changes and would you like to me proceed with the backend code as well? Before that, I'm going to run npm run dev as well, just to make sure that the code base is up and running and we don't have the note taking app yet. All right, the app is up and running, as you can see, and there is no note taking app. Okay, so we're going to go back to the cursor and it is asking me to make the changes. Yes, please go ahead. So it's preferably making the changes starting with the backend code first. All right, it has started to create a uh, route.ts and then it has started to add the backend component as well, note taking as well, um, added the new page as well. And then it is asking, would you like to go ahead and make the changes or not? So I'm going to say yes. And it is starting to create the backend API route as well on route.ts. And then it is creating the note taking component as well, making the file changes as well, and now adding it to the landing page. All right, so one thing to note here, I need to confirm it again and again to cursor, which was not the case, uh, preferably in the previous tool, which is uh, Kodo. So I just had to ask once and uh, kind of apply to all the changes. Uh, so the hassle was really less. All right, looks like it has made the changes in a couple of files. Let's go back to our UI and see where the changes are. Let's make it a refresh. All right, it has, it has made the change. Not The UI is not as good and intuitive as uh, in the last one, Kodo, but it has added a quick node. Um, so I'm going to say this was created using cursor. Hit on save and it is able to save as well. Not pretty happy with the UI that has created. It's a pretty simple raw UI that's done. But at least it has done the job after asking multiple times. All right, that's it from Cursor. I'll see you in the next one, which is Gemini CLI. All right, next one in the list is Gemini CLI. So I've already got into the Gemini IOTA wise folder. My server is up and running as well. There is no CLI. So I'm going to prompt it same. So just the first thing is once you've logged in, Ge just type in Gemini and it's going to fire up the UI. Uh, it's going to get the context as well. So the idea is you don't get any UI. All is within the CLI. With with um, with Cursor, you had an ID. With Kodo, you could still go to the UI and uh, uh, feel the simil similar interactive features as well. Gemini is completely who loves Terminal and all of the context is going to happen over here here on the CLI itself. So it is already inside the folder. Uh, so what I'm going to say is add a simple, again, the same prompt. The idea is to use the same prompt for all of these tools. So add a simple note-taking feature to the IOTA wise landing page and include the text button and all of those. So I'm going to hit enter. It is going to ask a bunch of changes as well. Uh, first, it's going to take the prompt and, and then it's going to say, uh, what it's going to do. So I will add a simple noting feature to the landing page. Here is my plan. So it is trying to add uh, the note taking file in the dashboard section. I'm going to allow always. Now it is making the changes in the page file as well. Now it is trying to add the note taking component 
uh, as you can see inside the dashboard. All right, so it has made the changes. It has updated the package JSON file as well. At the end, it is saying uh, npm please, which is already running, go to your browser and check. So let's go back to our server. Let's hit a refresh and see where it has created. Uh, right, it is created at the bottom. The UI, I don't like at all. It is not responsive at all. However, it has done the job. Uh, so I'm going to say this one was created using Gemini CLI. Save note taking and it is save the notes. I can save another note as well. But it's not responsive. It is It is not as clean. There's no gradient over here. There's no line. So it has done the job. Uh, still, my, my, my favorite is still Kono CLI. Not because it was able to generate really quick. However, it has a clean UI with a proper welcome node as well. All right. I hope uh, you're going to try this one. I'll see you in the next one, which is the last one, IDER as well. All right. Next one in the list is IDER. Now, if you've got OpenAI Cloud subscription already up and running, you can hook up IDER with the fav with your favorite LLM and then you can get started. So it, it needs to have some sort of context or some sort of open uh, API key as well. So as you can see, the first thing you need to do is uh, just type in IDER and then uh, select the model. I'm using OpenAI API. So you've got to have the API key as well, OpenAI key as well. Um, and that's one of the drawbacks. I, I feel if you don't have one, you'll have to probably top up with 5 to $10 and then probably get started. So I'm going to hit enter and uh, it's going to start querying out. Um, and I can simply add my prompt over here. So I'm going to say, add a simple note taking feature to the out. Same prompt again, add a note, add save button, displays and all of that. Let me just check whether the server is up and running. Yes, the server is up and running. There's no note taking app. So let's go back over here and then hit enter. And it is querying O3 mini, which is OpenAI API. It's querying the API, make sure you've got your billing enabled and you've got some credits over there. All right, so it's it's uh, trying to add some components. As you can see, it is trying to add uh, inside front end and then components as well. I'm going to say yes to all. So I'm going to say yes. And it'll start making the changes to the necessary files. Over here, you can see that how many tokens are used, how many sessions were used. I can see that it was sent almost 12k tokens, 86 received, and this was the cost incurred. All right, it is saying that it has used these many tokens, and this was the cost. It has made the changes. You can run your front end. Let's go back to our front end and give a refresh and see if it has made the changes. All right, the changes are not made. If you if you go back to your terminal, you would see that it has made the change in the front end uh, folder that has created a page or a component inside front end. However, if you go back to your code base, you would see that it already had a front end component. So it has created this folder. So front end, um, as you can see, if you go to the app folder, it already has a component of front page. So, uh, uh, it it was not successful. It was I have given the same prompt, however, still it did not work. So not pretty happy with either. You ended up spending money as well. You ended up spending tokens as well. If you had your own API key as well, however, with the same prompt, it could not work. I hope this was informative. Thank you. So what did we learn? Four different AI code generation tool, one single repo, one single prompt. One of them worked. One of them did not. One improved the code base. One really did it in a quick span of time. Go ahead and try it on your project as well. Just in case, if you want to try, I have given the repo link in the description as well. In case you want to dive deep beyond these photos, there's a detailed blog written by Kodo. And the link is in the description. You can go ahead and try that as well and figure out which one works for you. I'll see you in the next one. Thank you.